What's up, everybody? I'm Nick Taylor with The Crafty Gents. Today, we're in Whippy, Ontario with Aaron Broadfoot, who's the co-founder, co-owner of Little Beast Brewing Company. How's it going? Good. Thank Good. you for having us. No problem. Thanks for coming out. What beer are we trying today? This is Strange Eons. It is a double IPA or imperial IPA that's been heavily double dry hopped with citron mosaic. As a returning beer? Yes, we've done this one a few times. Perfect. Well, yeah. Perfect. You want to try it out? Sure. Cheers. Chad, cheers. <laughs> There's a lot of favor. Yeah, it's uh, it's citron mosaic, a kind of their cheat code hops, right? Yeah, you can't really go wrong with them. Hard so, to. Yeah, that's sweet. Is this more of like a style that you guys play on frequently? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of saisons and we do a lot of very hoppy beers, so. It, it, we definitely like to keep a few different varieties of hoppy beers in the fridge. We don't want them all to be the same. We want them all to be very different from one another. So you know you're drinking different IPAs. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one we plan on doing a lot of. Do you remember like the first time that you brewed beer? Like how'd you get into that? Uh, I do remember the first time I brewed beer. I actually injured myself fairly badly that day in a completely unrelated story. <laughs> it's only story, like four but... stories about <laughs> normal stuff. A little bit klutzy. <laughs> We're my business partner both. Um, one of my uh, best, my husband's best friends, actually the best man at our wedding, was a professional brewer and a home brewer. And my middle child's, I think it was her first or second birthday, he brought a bunch of his home brew over. And I was shocked by how good it was. Right. So I dug out my dad's old home brew equipment and started home brewing. And that was kind of what started it for me. I swore when I started home brewing that I wouldn't ever brew professionally and I wouldn't ever open up a brewery. <laughs> My husband kind of rolled his eyes at me a few times. And yeah, two years in, I was brewing three times a week. Oh, home, nice. And then decided just to kind of go in full force. That's awesome. Yeah. And so it's you and John. John Henley. John Henley. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Well, he started home brewing about the same time right. as me. And we actually, our first time going to a Durham homebrew club meeting, it was the same meeting we both went to for the first time. He was brewing home brewing more to reproduce English styles that he couldn't get out here very mm -hmm. readily. Uh, so we got to know each other through the club. And then we decided to do our BJCP, which right. is Beer Judge Certification Program. So we were part of a group that studied together and prepared together. So when I decided I was going to go in a full force and open a brewery, I didn't want to do it solo. I wanted to have um, business partners just to share workload ideas. It just to me, it seemed right to have somebody else to kind of share the burden with and to have somebody else to bounce things off of. Yeah. So I told him that I was giving up my job and going in full and asked if he wanted to too and 12 hours later he said sure and he abandoned what he was doing for a living and we opened this place i would imagine like especially because he's in a different style it would probably help with creativity too right it does like we both love all beers we both love a lot of the same things but then we both had emphasis on what we really loved or really specialized in or focused on that was a little bit different whereas i really enjoyed making smaller beers and really focusing on finer details john loved making big huge massive beers that were like eight to twelve percent he was obsessed with Hops. I loved hops, but was more obsessed with the Belgian side of things and saisons. So yeah, and you know, whereas he loves sweet stouts, I love American stouts. So we've complemented each other well. Yeah. Um, being able to collaborate on things that we both do, but also bring things out of each other that maybe we weren't so strong in ourselves. Yeah. So do you guys like you mentioned that there's different styles, but do you think that you specialize in one style in particular? Like in our brewery here? Or, yeah, or your brewing style or the brewery as a whole. I mean, everything I would definitely place as the brewery because no matter what John or I have brought in, it's all kind of become a melting pot of ideas. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's a lot of constructive criticism on both sides after each batch and kind of tweaking to kind of get things to where they are now. Uh, I, I, and I would say our focus or what we specialize in here would be saisons and hoppy beers right. with a smattering of stouts too. Uh, we've become known for our sour which wasn't necessarily something that we thought we'd get into huge we've become like the fruit brewery <laughs> so that yeah. kind of we're okay with it we didn't see it coming but we enjoy doing it so trying to do a wide range of things without spreading ourselves too thin right you yeah. mentioned like uh after each brewery like tweaking things and, and kind of getting better do you think that comes from the beer judging uh like experience that you had or, or studying to do that it definitely helps yeah. being able to pick up flaws definitely helps us kind of streamline our process and also because we don't want to settle we want to make good beer we want beer that stands out we want people to know that when they come here they're getting 
their money's worth when they buy a beer. So the beer judging helps, but a lot of that emphasis on making it better each time is just an ethical kind of person. Right. Thing, just I to think. continually get better. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Saison's being like a big highlight. Uh, you were just at the Homebrew Beer Academy, right? For like a little yeah, seminar thing. Yeah, I got to teach them a class at the yeah. Homebrew Academy. So is that yeah. a style that you just enjoy drinking or do you like brewing it or a little bit of both? Everything. I am mildly obsessed with yeah. Saison's. Yeah. <laughs> I The second beer I ever brewed at home was a Saison. And I just, the flavor notes and the profiles that come with it are so unique. Right. And there's so much, and people tend to think that that yeast is kind of a one trick pony, but there's so much you can do with it. And it's a beautiful yeast to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, the one we use is a strain from Escarpment. So it's definitely more belgian in its characteristics, a little softer, lots of clove, coriander. You can also get really spiky saison yeasts that are very, very, very peppery. Uh, but we like ours. We like the way the character draws out. And actually the Duchess, which is our table saison, is quite heavily poured in Toronto now. So it's nice, nice. to see it being really well received. Right. It's one of those beers too that it's really versatile. Like the, even the ABV can go from like three to like seven mm -hmm. or eight percent, right? Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and we do tons with it. I mean, we have the Belgian IPA style that we do with it, uh, the table saison, the dark one, which is really basically a Belgian double, and that's the category it actually meddled in. And yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. Right. One of the interesting beers that you guys released was like your wild beer. I think what's interesting about it was last year you released it at the Wild Things Festival, right? Yes. That's such a cool way to do that. It was a lot of fun. We didn't do it this year. We found doing something so small batch, it was difficult to do it and still ensure the quality that we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to play with. And it's something we are looking to do more in the future. We just need more equipment to get right. to that spot first. Is that like a much different process dealing with wild beer as opposed to? Contamination risks are yeah. huge. Yeah. And that's, we, I mean, as it is, the saison yeast we use is diastatic. Um, so it works differently than an American yeast and can present huge contamination issues in a brewery. So yeah. it's been tricky enough without adding something that's Brett based that can basically wreak havoc on your yeah. entire brewery. Brett's like really bad, right? It can get crazy. It can be and different brewers have different levels of comfort in working yeah. with it and believing how easy it is to clean the system or your tanks and stuff after using it. I tend to be a little bit more on the paranoid side. Mm -hmm. I think if speaking for John, he is too. I'm probably on the extreme end of paranoid, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So cool. we need a new packager before we can go down that road. Right. Um, getting to be like, or getting to what the brewery is itself. What are Little Beasts for people that don't know? What are Little Beasts? Yeah. Like the name where it comes from? Yeah. Where it's the, the yeast. Uh, yeah. It's the Little Beasts that make the beer. Right. A lot of people, and it was written about before that I have three kids and John has one um, that we named it after the children, but it <laughs> wasn't the kids. It was definitely no, it'd be the fitting, but... <laughs> It works, but and they're here a lot. Our yeah. kids are often here at the brewery. Um, but yeah, it's for the yeast because that's what yeast. makes the beer ultimately. Mm -hmm. And something that I feel like has become a bit of a staple or has always been, for me at least, is like the labels with the beer. Yeah. They're so unique. And what I love about it is like everyone is different and unique in their own right. But when you look at any one of them, like you know that it's a little beast beer. Yeah, it's Keir Broadfoot, who's also actually my husband, um, who does all of our label work. Uh, he's very talented and he's really, we kind of just left it to him. We're like, we want, this is the name. We want a beast in there somewhere, go nuts. Right. And he's really created this whole identity for us yeah. that we didn't see coming has been a really neat adjunct to the beer, this whole art angle. Yeah. So now every Wednesday we release a cartoon or a drawing that he's done. I noticed that just this morning. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's being really well received. And I, I love seeing how well received this has been. Yeah. It's amazing seeing him. It's Art's a brutal way to try to make a living. I, everybody loves art. But nobody wants to it. pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants it, right? But nobody yeah. wants to pay for it. Right. So it's been very hard for him to find ways to break into it. But he's now selling oils through here, um, acrylics, other things. And it's nice seeing him finally get some of the attention that's yeah. due, I think. The names are also really unique as well. And they seem yeah. very abstract at first. But is there a meaning behind each one? Some. Most of the IPs and hoppy beers are beasts or creatures. Okay. Um, the saisons, we started with a French angle because to, saisons, what we're doing, comes out of a French speaking region of Belgium. And right. we wanted to differentiate our Belgian side from American side. We kind of we come away from that every once in a while and throw in just a regular name for our saisons, but that's why most of them are French. Uh, most of the stouts, 
are musical Easter eggs. Both John and I, music has been huge in both oh, of yeah? our lives. He was in a band. I don't like being on stage, so my band career <laughs> ended very early. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of song Easter eggs in the South. Really? I think it's cool about this brewery is like how much you guys get involved with like the community and things like that and events that come on in here. One of the ones that like, I feel like really sets you apart or you becoming known for is your uh, beer and cheese nights. Yeah. Yeah. They're sweet. How often you put those on? We were doing them every month. We've come down a little bit just because we had done so many of them. But the ladies we do them with, Heather and Maddie, are amazing. I love Heather and I love Maddie. They work with the website beerx.ca. And it's been very cool. And they're very laid back and very chill in how they do it. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool learning experience. And it's a lot of fun. And who doesn't love cheese? And yeah. Beer, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it very cool because well. I feel like a lot of people would just think about like wine and cheese. But then mm -hmm. you see more breweries doing beer and cheese. There's so many different flavors in beer. So mm -hmm. it pairs with food so much better than people expect. And it's neat. And cheese is, because you can do such little amounts of it, seeing the interplay between those flavors when you take the time to do it it's really cool how you can emphasize or wash out a flavor with different beers are there other events like in here that you guys are looking to do more of in the future yeah i mean we have food trucks and pop-ups almost every weekend through the summer which yeah. is nice we had gangster cheese here last weekend yes. that food is amazing yeah. that grilled cheese was great which is awesome too i like working with other local business owners so and it's amazing what they've done with that place um we're starting, we did beer, board games, uh, pizza for a while. I think we're pulling back on that one a little bit now, just because it's kind of run its course and the board games are always here. So you yeah. don't have to come and that's, we have free board games people can always use here. So we're gonna start doing a pizza and cask night the last Friday of every month, I think Sweet. in the fall. So we'll have a new cask come out that week every time and Mark's Pizza will be here. He makes killer pizza. Yes, they're everywhere too. So, yeah, he's all over the place, but yeah. his pizza is really, really, really good. Yeah. So. I like having food in the brewery, but I don't want to have to make the food. So it's yeah. nice working with other local artisans to do it. That's cool. Um, is there anything that you guys are looking to do, like whether it be events, like I mean, you just talked about a few of them, or like beers that you're making that you're not doing right now that you're looking to do in the future? Yeah, we've got definitely, there's lots we're looking to do. A couple of new IPAs coming out this summer. We want to do a couple of different porters. We have looking at a coffee porter in the future, oh, a sweet. smoked porter. I love smoked beers. And it's a harder beer to bring out though. Not everybody loves a smoked beer. Mm -hmm. We're looking to get into barreling. Yes, I was wondering. So, I saw the barrels yeah. over there and I was like, those are ask old. You. We can't use them. Not gonna use those, but new. they're dried and old and we're gonna sell those off. Right. But we're bringing in some fresh barrels and we're planning a fairly large last year we kinda let our anniversary go by. <laughs> yeah. We felt we needed some time to really grow into ourselves. I and mean, it takes a few runs through each beer to really bring them into what you want them to be. But this year we're planning some big stuff for our anniversary. So some big beer releases, some barrel stuff. We're gonna Very have cool. some fun with it. So, Very cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for coming. It was out. easy. I feel like you did really well on the camera. It was all good. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank okay. you for coming. Perfect.